Sanjay Chadda, first reaction uh, to the charge that is being made by the law minister. He calls the collision system opaque and says this is a matter of concern, not just for him as the law minister, but for the larger group which is affected by the judiciary, which means the civil society, retired judges, advocates, for everybody, the collision system is a matter of concern. Uh, what I will not totally, Anorima, ready, uh, agree with the, what uh, our law minister has said. It's not OPEC, uh, but certainly it is not transparent, I must say so. It's not transparent and uh, there are need that we need, a lot of changes are required. We have got, you know, uh, in... Uh, I would say executive as well as judiciary, both are trying to, you know, it's a kind of tag of war and everybody wants to have the power with him or his uh, uh, self only. And they don't want to basically uh, let this power go. And we have seen appointment of judges even in recent past, uh, how, you know, uh, after even recommendation, they've been kept and uh, time has been past. Hmm. So there is certainly there is a need of more transparency. Transparency. Why we see that uh, 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 the judges are coming from the same background. Right. Why this is happening. This is nobody is raising this question because of uh, various uh, hidden hmm. Hmm. reasons. Okay. But you know, the, in totality there are one part is that executive does not want to let this power go mm. one mm. Uh, even judiciary does not want any kind of intervention mm. that is also unfair i would say third would be that why this uh, uh, why not transparency our country we have been passing we have passed laws pertaining to rti all those things mm. where transparency efficiency accountability these are the paramount issues which uh, certainly we try and uh, uh, take care of and right. we follow the okay. path of you know, these three things are there okay. but why not this Okay, Mr. Kothari, uh, Mr. Swapnil Kothari, come in on that. Is there a conflict of interest? If the executive is given the power to appoint judges, as far as of in independence of judiciary goes, will it be compromised? Uh, Arunima, it definitely will be compromised. I'm very much against the NGAC. The collegium system, with whatever its flaws, is the best uh, in the current climate today. We have a lot, tremendous amount of political interference. Any which way is into the judicial functioning. We have... Uh, people who throw barbs at the judiciary, we have people who uh, initiate uh, impeachment proceedings against the Chief Justice for their own personal ends. And uh, that is the reason why I do not want any executive interference in the judiciary. Hmm. Uh, so it's best that the collegium system prevails even with its flaws. Yes, it can be more transparent and that is something which only the judges can do because uh, the NJAC system was declared as unconstitutional with the exception of Justice Chela Meshwar at the time hmm. when it came out saying that it was unconstitutional. And it definitely is simply because it intrudes upon the uh, terrain of the judiciary. Right. Uh, and I, for one, uh, I do not believe this is not a presidential form of government where the president has the power to appoint the people to the uh, Supreme Court, hmm. uh, like in the United States. Hmm. Uh, there, There is a tremendous amount of check and balance system because the president is pretty much above board. And if the president is uh, trying to uh, food see uh, politics into the judiciary, uh, into the judiciary at that time, uh, the president is taken to task and the president is impeached and the president is thrown out. Hmm. So there is a tremendous amount of check and balance system. That's a 225 year old democracy. We are 70 years with uh, three times more population of the United States. And it's not a presidential form of government. It's a parliamentary form of government where there is tremendous amount of executive interference in which ways you can see the amount of cases that go to the Supreme Court are absolutely something which the Supreme Court was not cut out to do, uh, to uh, do Gyan Vapi and this, that and the other. Hmm. And uh, there is too much of politics which is at play in every single thing that happens in this country. Right. So the last thing you want is a, uh, an appointee of a political system. Let the judges appoint their mamas themselves. Let there be a little bit of bias. Let there be a preferential system. Let nephews, nieces and far off, uh, uh, you know, relatives be appointed. Let there be nepotism. Hmm. But... It will not at least, uh, uh, you know, uh, subscribe or be obsequious to the political whims and fancies right. of the government in power of the person who's appointed them. Okay, so very strong comments coming in from the, both the supporters and the, those who are opposed uh, to the collegium system. Sanjay Chadda and Swapnil Kothari, I would request you to hold on. Like I said, strong opinion coming in from both sides. Let's listen into what Majid Memon and KTS Tulsi, top uh, officers of the court, had to say on this matter. The law minister Rijuji is aware that uh, if the job of appointment of judges in higher judiciary is exclusively left to judges, it is bad. 
because then probably number of uh, you see evil practices would crop in but at the same time leaving it exclusively to the domain of politicians would be worse because in that event we will have all politically uh, uh, affiliated judges which would uh, completely jeopardize the fairness of functioning of supreme court and high courts independence of judiciary is one of the paramount uh, virtues of the constitution of india and it's very important for us to be able to maintain the independence its basic structure and the question is that it can never be that the government of the day will have the exclusive power to appoint judges it it, it cannot be political it will be 10 times worse than the present system uh, and it it will hinder the the disposal of cases